Hello everyone and welcome to the Safety Artisan where you will find professional, pragmatic and impartial safety training resources and videos. Uh, I'm Simon, your host, and I'm recording this on the 13th of April 2020. And uh, given the circumstances when I record this, I hope this finds you all well. So let's get on to our topic for today which is system hazard analysis. Now, system hazard analysis is, as you may know, just adjust this slightly, is task 205 in the MIL standard 882 ECHO um, system safety standard. So, moving on. What we're going to cover in this session uh, is purpose, task description, reporting, contracting, and some commentary, although I'll be making commentary all the way through. So going to the back to the top, um, the yellow highlighting with this and with task 204, I'm using the yellow highlighting to indicate differences between task 205 and 204 because uh, they are superficially quite similar uh, and then I'm using underlining to emphasize those things that I want to really bring to your attention and emphasize. So within task 205 um, purpose, uh, we've got four purposes for this one, um, verify subsystem compliance and recommend necessary actions, that's the fourth one there, and then in the middle of the sandwich we've got uh, identification of hazards, both um, between the subsystem interfaces and faults from the subsystem propagating up to the overall system, and identifying hazards in the integrated system design. Okay, so a very different emphasis to 204, which was really thinking about subsystems in isolation. So we've got five slides of task description, a couple on reporting and uh, one on contracting, uh, nothing new there, and several commentary. So let's get straight on with it. So the purpose, as we've already said, there is a, a threefold purpose here, verify system compli compliance, hazard identification and recommending actions, and then, as we can see in the yellow, the uh, identifying previously unidentified hazards is split into two, um, looking at subsystem interfaces and faults and the integration of the overall system design. OK. And you can see the yellow bit that's, that's different from 204, where we are taking this much higher level view taking a sort of inter subsystem view and an integrated view so on to the task description uh yet yeah, the contractor's got to do it and document it as usual um, looking at hazards and mitigations or controls in the integrated system design including software and human interfaces very important that we'll come on to that later um all the usual stuff about we've got to include cots gots um gfe and ndi so even if stuff is not being developed if we're you know putting together a jigsaw system from existing pieces we've still got to look at the overall thing and as with uh, 204 we go down to the underlined text at the bottom of the, of the slide areas to consider think about performance and degradation of performance functional failures timing and design errors defects inadvertent functioning so that classic uh, functional failure analysis that we've seen before and again while conducting this analysis we've got to include human beings as a integral component of the system uh, so receiving inputs and initiating outputs. So all good stuff, human factors included in this standard from, from long, long ago. Okay, slide two. 
So we've got to include a review of subsystem interrelationships. Okay, so the assumption is that we've previously done task two and four down at a low level, and now we're building up to task two and five. So again, verification of system compliance uh, with requirements, um, identification of new hazards and emergent hazards, recommendation for actions. But part C is really the new bit. Okay, so we are looking at possible independent, dependent, and simultaneous events, including system failures, failures of safety devices, common cause failures, and system interactions that could create a hazard or increase risk. Okay, so, and this is really the new stuff in 205. And we are going to emphasize in the commentary, we're going to look very carefully at those underlying things because they are key to understanding task 205. So moving on to slide three, uh, all new stuff, all in yellow. Um, so degradation of a system or the total system. Yeah, um, design changes that affect subsystems. Now I've underlined this because what's the what's the constant in projects is change. Okay, you start off thinking you're going to do something, and maybe the concept changes subtly or not so subtly during the project. Uh, maybe your assumptions change, the schedule changes, the resources available change. You thought you were going to get access to something. Uh, and, but it turns out that you 